Welcome to The Barn, where we party hard, but hustle harder. In today's episode, we're going to go over everything you need to start a barber shop, from your initial capital investment, to your day-to-day -day expenditures, to the possible incomes you could make, and how you could scale this up in the long run. This is going to be a great episode, you want to stick till then. Without wasting any more time, let's start. Chapter 1. The Capital Investment. To start with, we're going to allocate $50 for a mirror. This is one of those mirrors that the client will have to see as you cut their hair and see as the styling is going. No one is going to trust you to cut their hair if they're not seeing what's going on. Trust me. Next, you want to get a nice comfortable chair for them to sit in as you cut their hair. You can't go with a, any old plastic chair as you want to be giving some sort of quality to your clients. Therefore, for this, I would recommend spending at least $50 on a good, comfortable, cushioned chair. And next, you need some tools to actually cut the hair. So, one of those scissor kits that comes with a comb and all, like, a picture is going to be right here. You, you don't need to invest so much into this and $20 kits that are available online would do just fine. Then, your main asset that you're going to need is the shaving machine. For this, I invest you go for the most high-end one as it's literally what's going to be making you your living. I know there are tons of ones out there in the market for $10 even, $20, but you need to be considering you'll be cutting multiple people's hair per day and you want this to last you for years to come so you don't keep replacing it. As we like to say, sometimes cheap can be expensive. So let's say at least $100 for this. A nice Philips one where you can change the blades to, uh, based on the level of which you want to cut your hair will work just fine. The next thing you want to get is a waiting chair set. We recommend spending $50 on these. These are one of those chairs that's a single unit but has three chairs together with it. This way, any potential customer that comes while they're waiting for you to finish with your existing client, they won't leave as they don't have somewhere to sit. It's essential that you have this so that you know your customers feel welcomed into the shop even when it's not their turn. Next, you want to spend $50 on a blow dryer. Trust me, I used to go to a barber that didn't have this, but this blow dryer makes it so much easier because as you wet the client's hair, and you want to dry it off so that the blade is easier to cut and will save you a lot of hassle in the long run. I've spoken to so many barbers and they've said that a blow dryer is a must. Then you want to spend like $20 on hair oils and gels for the clients to use after you finish their haircut so you can show them how to style it and that they feel that you're giving them this extra service. Trust me, $20 is more than enough. You don't need to get the best hair oils and best gels unless you're actually selling them. Then the next thing, you want to have some sort of entertainment inside your barber shop so as to not make it such a monotonous environment. A simple radio with Bluetooth that's for $20 would work just fine. But as I'll explain in later chapters, to make your business very unique, you want to have extra uh, entertainment services available as your clients are waiting as it does get quite boring sitting in the barber shop with nothing to do but at least get this radio to start with so that you bring that liveliness into your um, shop then finally the last thing you want to get is uh, tables and cupboards it may seem like you don't need it but you know you need that sort of space a simple hundred dollar investment you could get one of those local manufacturers anywhere to build one for you that can suit your needs in the beginning this takes us up to a total capital expenditure of about 460 dollars additionally you want to have at least six months of expenses in the bank before you quit your job and pursue this full time as you do not know what unexpected things could come for you and we're going to cover this in the next chapter. So now the running expenses. So to run your blades and to have the light and to charge your radio you're going to need some sort of electricity. In fact for any business it's very unlikely you'd need electricity but it's not a very capital intensive business so we can say just $20 per month would work just fine. Then next you want to have accounting because you know to be tax compliant and to ensure you're keeping a record of your profit and loss it's very very important to keep an accounting your business is your book of accounts 
And for such a business, I know because I am an accountant by profession, the account, like for our clients, we know that such bookkeeping wouldn't be very, very difficult and you could easily get away with spending $30. If no one accepts $30 for your this sort of business, you can hit us up at the bar and I promise we'll do it for you at that low, low price. Next, you need some sort of water. As you, you know, you need to be uh, spraying a bit in the client's hair as you cut it to clean around. And water ain't even that expensive. It's easily gonna cost you just like $5 per month. Then next, of course, you wanna be earning from this business and uh, studying the average that people earn in this market, you can expect to take home a salary of $2,000. Then you also want to invest a little bit into the marketing, especially when you're such a beginner, because you want to get that word of mouth going and people to know you're there. A simple $30 investment into marketing just to get your name out there is more than enough. This could be anything from a simple local newspaper ad to a shout out on the radio, but what I see works best is Facebook ads as you can actually target people for specifically in the bub and such terms such as hair, haircut, hairstyling and the algorithm is very good and I've seen you can reach thousands if not millions of people with just a simple $30 investment. If you want a video specifically on Facebook ads, hit us up in the comment section down below and we'll create an entire video showing you how to run a Facebook campaign from start to end. And then the next uh, uh, expenditure you'd have is your rent. Now to start off with, a simple $200 place can do just fine. You'll of course want to scale this up later as I'll explain. But a, a nice $200 place will give you enough room to run your business and establish yourself. Don't go too, too heavy on this in the beginning as we can see that the rent in certain locations gets quite high. I know if you negotiate and find the right location, you just need a small shop to cater for your few clients per day in the beginning and $200 should work just fine. So we're going to say that our total expenditure is $2,500, giving room for any miscellaneous expenses that are not accounted for such as repairs and maintenance. Now for chapter three, what is the predicted income you can make from this business? Now let's assume you can serve one person every 15 minutes and you work eight hours per day at 75% capacity due to idle time. Let's just say you don't have someone in the seat for whatever reason, someone didn't come. So that gives you 24 clients per day. Assuming you charge each client $10 and you work for 25 days in a month, your total income comes to a whopping $6,000 per month, which is $72,000 per year. Now let's look at your predicted P&L for chapter four. As I went over in chapter two, your expenses per year are roughly $30,000. And uh, by law, you may also need to take insurance permits. Like in Kenya, you have to get your books audited file a secretary return. So let's add an extra thousand dollars for all these other miscellaneous things you need to run your business. That takes you to a total yearly expenditure of $31,000. And as I mentioned in chapter three, the total income you can expect to make from this business is $72,000 per year. Therefore, your profit before tax is your income less your expenditure giving you $42,000. Now, depending on where you live, you will have to pay an income tax. And I don't want to get too much into whether tax is a good thing or a bad thing. I believe tax is good as it helps build the infrastructure and hospitals. But leaving that aside, the reason I think you should pay your taxes, the tax man will come knocking at your door at some point. And if you have not been tax compliant and they audit your books, you risk taking fines that are like 10, 15 times the amount that you defaulted on and it's such a headache. You might, you might as well just comply knowing that tax is a subscription to the country you live in. If you pay it, you live without headache. Anyone knocks on your door tomorrow, you can prove that you've done your business legitimately and this makes it easier for you to scale it in the long run. Now, tax rates in the world vary between 20 to 30%. Here in Kenya, it's 30%. But for the sake of this video, let's assume an average of 25% in taxation. 
So if you take 25% of uh, the $42,000 you make per year, that's $10,500, leaving you with a retained earnings of $31,500 per year. This is a great amount of money to not only create a, a, a savings for other future investments and other businesses you may want to try, but it leaves you room to do two major things inside your business. Either A, you can now make your business more unique than an average barber shop, or you could expand your business in the same niche. So let's go over how you can make your business more unique. You could add more entertainment, as I mentioned earlier, to make your place more lively, such as purchasing a television with a, a, a subscription to Netflix, or buying a pile of magazines and books for your clients to use as they sit. Furthermore, if you want to get a bit extra the way I love to do, you can have a juice bar or a coffee bar inside your shop to serve your clients as they wait to make them slightly more comfortable. You could also like now change your entire sitting to make put like extreme massage chairs or you know, have fun with it. What do you want in your barber shop? Think about it. Another thing you may want to consider doing is getting a slightly bigger space and hiring another barber. Another thing that works well in barbershops uh, when you want to make yourself unique is have a station where after you cut your client's hair, you can wash their hair also for free. This may be such a small gesture and as I told you, water bills are like nothing, but it would mean so much to the client. Because think about it, would you rather get your hair cut at a place that's just cutting your hair or somewhere where for the same price you can get your hair cut and also washed. Now, to grow your business, as I mentioned, you could hire another barber that you train and the same math applies. Just get another machine, another mirror, another chair and just expand with the number of haircuts you could do per day until you reach a point of saturation. And then another cool thing you could do is you could touch a trading line within the barber niche. For example, things like the gels, the oils, these shaving machines that they want to use themselves at home. Now when you import this, you can even be cheaper than the market and like people won't only be coming to you for the service, but they also know that you have the complementary product. And think about it, your barber shop will now act like an advertisement to all these other things because the people who get their hair cut at your shop are already the people who are more likely to buy the haircut um, accessories from you. Another way you can expand if you don't want to get into trading is offering other similar services such as you could open a teaching school where you teach people how to cut their hair or offer other things such as dyeing hair or doing people's nails or opening a small massage parlor. I hope this video has been very informative for you and going over everything on how to start a barbershop business model wherever you are in the world. Let me know which other business models you want me to explore for you guys in the future. We already have a beautiful lineup from dog breeding to library to social media marketing and we can't wait to show these all with you. If this video has provided any value to you whatsoever, please hit the like buttons and comment down below as it really boosts us. And subscribe and hit the push bell notification buttons so you never miss out on any of these fabulous videos that literally take me hours to research so you don't have to. We'll see you on the next show for now.